Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Audemars Piguet Millinery Automatic. You can see and you can purchase this 18 karat white gold in-house movement Audemars Piguet Millinery on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full listing for this watch with additional accessories included with the sale high resolution images, and naturally complete pricing details for this Audemars Piguet. Now on my wrist, 6 and 3rd inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see that this is part of what was effectively the second generation of Audemars Piguet millinery models. The original watch across the broad of its case from what's effectively 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, not inclusive of the crown, was only 38 millimeters, which was just a bit undersized. Now this example, part of the post-2000 reimagining of the millinery is far larger and has a much more impressive and one might even say imposing wrist stance. 45 millimeters is the measurement from 3 to 9 across the case lengthwise along the wrist. In terms of lug to lug dimensions, the watch is 48 millimeters across, so though it is large and does take up a lot of wrist real estate in terms of surface area, you can still wear this on a small wrist. I would say, considering how far short of the edge of my wrist these lugs actually protrude. I would estimate that down to 14 centimeters in circumference you should be able to wear this watch on your wrist with great proportion and security. Now the watch is also wonderfully thin. Thanks to the Audemars Piguet in-house caliper it's only 9.5 millimeters thick and you can see that with a curved bezel and a stepped case flank it's actually easy to ride a dress cuff or a tight sleeve up and over this watch. So it's absolutely well suited to formal attire but it has a sort of postmodernist sensibility about it that with the white metal and black accent combination would wear equally well with short sleeves. Now you can see that the strap, thanks to close coupled and curved spring bars, hews very close to the flank of the case. The look is very integrated with minimal daylight showing between strap and case. Nevertheless, you can pull the strap straight down around the tight curve of a small wrist like mine. Oftentimes when you have a strap that's so close pressed to the flank of the case, it wants to flare out and fight you. Not so here, and it is a very substantial black monotone stitch alligator leather with a Audemars Piguet inset logo, single fold deployant, made of white gold, like the case. It has a nice counterbalancing quality, a big heavy clasp on the underside of the strap of a big heavy watch, such that if you do like to wear this loose, if you're of the type to wear your watches a little bit loose for comfort or style, this watch isn't going to want to capsize or porpoise. That's part of the balance that the clasp endows. Now you can also see that the case is remarkably complex. For something that appears to be just an oval on the wrist at first glance, there's a surprising amount of contrast. You can see the step of the case flank. You can see the fluting of the lugs themselves. You can see the contrast between the polished lugs and bezel and the satin finished case and lug flanks. It's fairly nuanced, but it pales in comparison to the complexity of the dial itself. Now the dial features loomed alpha hands at center and then two separate finishes. Outboard you have a fully lacquered, that is white and black lacquered dial. You also have an inboard lacquered disc and then you have a fully metallic with applied white gold Roman numeral hour track inboard. So there's a lot going on on this dial in terms of depth, asymmetry, balance of tones, balance of finishes. It's an immensely impressive effort that's remarkably coherent considering all the different design elements that are contained in this 45 millimeter case. Now it also has a date which is fairly discreet at 3 o'clock and could disappear if you're not looking for it. The case back, however, is just as appealing and even more fearsomely complex. What you're looking at is the Audemars Piguet in-house caliber 3120, 40 joules bi-directional winding. You can see the coats of arms of the family Audemars and Piguet on the gold winding mass. Of course, the company is still owned and operated by the founding families. You also note the Cote de Genève, the Geneva waves across the bridges, and mechanically, you can see the full balance bridge with free sprung balance assembly, the better to resist shock induced timing variations. Now it has approximately a 55 hour power reserve via bi-directional automatic winding. Audemars Piguet wanted bi-directional because it doesn't have the unloaded 
rotor wobble that you get on certain unidirectional winding calibers. So what Audemars Piguet does to make up the loss in efficiency is use unlubricated ceramic rotor bearings at center. Sealed for life, they ensure long wearing durability of the movement and increase the winding efficiency of the winding system. There's also an even and gloriously tight perlage pattern across the base plate of the movement and as you can see on the gleam of the balance bridge, a beautiful mirrored anglage finish on all with polished screw heads and chamfered slots. It's immensely satisfying, featuring hacking seconds such that when you pull the crown, you do stop the balance, stop the seconds, you can precisely synchronize to a known accurate reference time, and there is a quick set function for the date such that you can rapidly correct it should the watch run down. All of that operating at 21,600 vibrations per hour encased in white gold with a water resistance of 3 ATM. You can see and you can purchase this Audemars Piguet white gold millinery automatic on our website.